everybody! The deer, I'm reviewing Wait Until Dark. The film was made in 1967 and it stars Audrey Hepburn as a blind lady who gets involved with these nasty people who are after this doll that's stuffed with heroin. And she, um, by accident, gets the doll and it's inside her house. So uh, these nasty folk are trying to get the doll and it's a brilliant film, absolutely brilliant. It was made in 1967 and it was directed by Terence Young. That's the guy who directed three of the early James Bond films, Dr. Noor, From Russia We Love and Thunderball. He's a great director and even though I love them three James Bond films, I think this film is his best film. It's even better than them. The film was made for three million dollars but it made 17 and a half million at the box office so it was quite successful and it's based on a play that uh, was very well made a year previously in 1966 so it's been adapted later as well it's like a well-known play it does well in theatres so the film's an adaptation of the, the theatre play it also only runs 108 minutes, so it's like just over half, one and a half hours, so it's quite short. Audrey Hepburn's fantastic in this film. I think it's her best film. As I say, she plays a blind woman and she, she did an excellent job. She even got an Academy nomination for it. She didn't win the, the, the award, but she was awarded it. And that's quite surprising for that time, because they didn't really... Um, sort of like associate with psychological horror type films like awards were usually given to other types of films not this genre all the cast's excellent but uh, Audrey Hepburn steals the show she's great uh, the way she plays being blind that them um, like when she's looking at someone she's not quite directly looking at them she's, she's always slightly off a little bit it's really clever how she does that and also, if you know it, she doesn't blink much in the film. Also, Alan Arkin, who plays Roat, he's the main evil guy in the film. And he's pure evil. Really one of the best characters put on screen. When, when you watch him in the film, it, you can't take your eyes off him. He's got a, a great presence. He's a right evil sod. He was a right evil bugger, that twat! I'd stick that knife right up his bloody asshole. <laughs> with, um, with the film being based on a player, you, you can tell that, um, like, it does look stagey. Sort of like the film's all sort of like focused in one apartment most of the time. There's some scenes where it, it's outdoors, but not many. It's mostly in her apartment. It looks like a player because people are entering and leaving all the time, different characters. It's really good and clever. Roat's um, kind of blackmailing these other two guys who aren't as evil as him to try and find this doll full of heroin. He blackmails them because they enter her apartment and they have a bit look around and they say this dead woman in a body bag in the bathroom. That's a really uh, creepy well done saying that. When, when the discoverer and um, Roat comes in and tells them uh, they've left fingerprints all over the place and if they don't do what he says, he'll tell the police. So the, the, the kind of blackmailed into helping him find this doll full of heroin. So they play different characters trying to manipulate the blind woman, Susie, into telling them where she's left the doll in the apartment. But she slowly gets suspicious of what's going on because she can, although she's blind, she can, she's got great hearing and senses. And she, she knows that some of them are like doing signals like opening the blinds. And one of them has a squeaky show that, that she keeps uh, remembering. I also like the opening scene when you first see her entering her apartment and they're inside the apartment. So they're like hiding from her because she's blind. So there's one guy behind the door like that. And someone under the staircase. 
you almost hold your breath because uh, you know they're, they've got to keep really still while she's walking around the, the, they don't want to make a noise to show the presence so uh, that was a really good directed scene that suspense scenes it reminds me a lot of Alfred Hitchcock films during that time he was he was making his best films so I think the kind of inspired inspired the makers uh, uh, of these uh, great suspense films. He's my favourite director, by the way. So hopefully I'll get to review most of these films on this channel. Also, the, the film's famous for its uh, legendary jump jump scare. It's a, it's a really really massive jump scare. It was one of the first ones done on uh, film. I won't tell you exactly what happens because I don't want to spoil the film for you but when you're watching it, it it's sort of like about two thirds into the film you get this big jump scare it, it, it's excellent if you haven't seen the film yeah you should watch it just just for that alone you, you will jump hey you bugger I didn't have fucking jump Another thing about this film that I really like, and it, it tends to happen with most of my favourite films, it's the music, the music score. It's excellent, really atmospheric. If you if you watch the film, you'll know what I mean by listening to the music score. It's excellent. It's also strange that this film's all set in just one day. It starts off during the morning, and it slowly gets darker. As the film progresses and the suspense in the atmosphere gets more intense as uh, it slowly gets darker and darker and the real horror happens at night the film has long um scenes that um you don't get that with modern films modern films are all cut fast so you have little short scenes all scattered all throughout the film but like films that were made years ago like the the 60s etc that Especially this film, they do like long films that were properly blocked, blocked out so the, the performers knew exactly where they were going to move and where the camera was going to move. And I, I like that. It, it's a shame they don't do uh, make films like that anymore because it, it's really suspenseful and it works really well. Obviously with a film called Wait Until Dark, you know, there's going to be loads of shadowy scenes. And it's really good uh, when Susie uh, smashes all the lights, make it, making the house dark, so she has an advantage over the bad guys. It scared the bloody shit out of me! Her <laughs> being blind, she doesn't need light. So uh, that's really clever, that, that scene. The two men that are getting blackmailed by Rot aren't as bad, like Mike. He seems to, like at the finish, kind of admire Susie. But unfortunately, you know, he doesn't last till the end of the film. So uh, it, it, it's really good though. It's good characterisation. The little girl who, who keeps uh, visiting her, she's good as well. It's her who has the doll. When Susie finds out that uh, they're after it, she, she she's really panicking. There's there uh, some sad moments as well. Uh, there's there's a scene where she's telling the little girl that uh, she's not used to being blind and she's not used to all this darkness. So my final thoughts is this film's not for everyone because it's like a slow burner type of film. But if you don't mind that, you you you'll get a heck of a lot out of this film. It's excellent. Especially if you like psychological thrillers. I kind of like them. That they can work really well. Um, I, I used to like like the ordinary horror films with monsters and stuff. But I prefer, I think psychological horror films or psychological thrillers, whatever you want to call them. They can work um, better. They're, they're more effective somehow. It's because uh, it can really happen. Like, there's the realistic value to them. So it's like novels. I prefer reading psychological thrillers when, when I buy a novel instead of horror novels. 
So marks out of 10, what would I give this film, eh? Hmm, I wonder. Actually, it gets top marks. It's pretty brilliant. I've got to say this film. With the bone speed about it, I really like it. It gets 10 out of 10 for me. Bloody brilliant film. Okay, everybody, bye, bye.